Hello and welcome to the Elevate webinar series on creating a gender-affirming healthcare environment for optimal HIV care. This webinar would not be possible without the considerable expertise and valuable contributions from Asa Radix from Callan Lord Community Health Center, Madeline Deutsch from the Center of Excellence for Transgender Health, Tonya Petit from John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. The Annenberg Center would like to acknowledge and thank each of them for helping make this webinar series possible and for all the content presented in the live specialist and primary care meetings associated with this activity. The Annenberg Center thanks you for your time and participation in this program. Our guide and narrator for this webinar is Dr. Andy McRae, Scientific Director for the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences. Andy uses masculine pronouns or anything respectful. Here now is Dr. Andy McRae. Hello, I'd like to begin by sharing a true story about care experienced by a fellow healthcare provider. In 2010, Laura returned to Tulsa, Oklahoma, following a week long stay in California where she had just undergone secondary genital reassignment surgery. Laura went to California so that the procedure could be performed by the surgeon who had completed her original genital reassignment surgery in 2005. Her surgeon was one of the leading specialists in the world, a gynecologist who herself had traveled the same medical journey as Laura, from male sex designated at birth to female. Shortly after returning to Tulsa, Laura developed a minor but extremely painful abscess around one suture. Because Laura's family practice physician was not available on the weekend, she went to a relatively new, well-regarded healthcare center. The receptionist was pleasant, and the physician, a man about 50 years old, entered the room, smiling and friendly. When Laura explained why she was there, the friendliness quickly evaporated. The smile disappeared, his face contorted into an expression of disgust, and as he fled the room without examining Laura or obtaining any further history, he said to her, go back to California. Laura was devastated, angry, embarrassed, and ashamed. And it was not the first time Laura was made to feel this way. Like you, Laura is both a provider and a patient. She is someone who is well-informed and, ex and experienced providing healthcare. However, unlike most of us, Laura also has the perspective of being transgendered. Unfortunately, Laura's story is all too common. In a 2010 Lambda Legal Report, 70% of transgender respondents stated they experienced some kind of mistreatment or discrimination from healthcare providers. And this is a major contributor to the significant health disparities that afflict the transgender and gender nonconforming community. These disparities and the patient stories behind them led those of us at the Annenberg Center to ask, as a continuing medical education provider, what can we do differently to foster a more positive healthcare experience and better health outcomes for this vulnerable population? The good news is the evidence and best practices are well understood and it all begins with you. So thanks again for joining us in this important effort. Let's get started. This webinar is divided into five modules and you are encouraged to review the modules in sequence. In module one, we will describe some basic terminology pertaining to transgender nonconforming individuals. In module two, we explore the healthcare disparities experienced by these patients and their underlying causes. To become more com comfortable with the spectrum of differences, module three provides an overview of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. In module four, we review some general approaches for providing a welcoming, and culturally responsive gender affirmative trans care. Finally, module five summarizes key insights and introduces additional resources. We are grateful you have elected to take this journey with us. And at the end of this activity, you should be more comfortable with gender affirming terminology and practices. You should be able to explain HIV vulnerabilities for transgender nonconforming persons. Before we begin the next module on the healthcare disparities experienced by this community, let's review a few key terms that will be used throughout this activity and that many people find confusing. Gender identity is simply how you think about yourself. 
However, language around gender identity is often far from simple. It can be complex, confusing, and contested. For example, how can someone's gender identity be neither man or woman? How can someone's gender identity be both man or woman, or in between? Transgender simply refers to individuals whose gender identity is different from the biological sex assigned to them at birth. One may be a transgender woman or trans woman, or one may be a transgender man or trans man. The emphasis is on identity, not anatomy. A transgender individual may describe themselves simply as a woman or a man and reject the transgender label when asked about their gender identity. A cisgendered individual has a gender identity that is the same as their assigned biological sex. But not everyone falls into this binary scheme. Gender nonconforming refers to individuals who experiences or identities fall outside of binary gender norms. A gender nonconforming person may or may not identify as transgender, and they may use terms like gender queer, gender fluid, or non binary to describe their gender identity. Finally, it's important to understand that one's gender identity or how they view themselves does not speak to their sexual orientation or who they find emotionally or physically attractive. Transgender nonconforming individuals can have any sexual orientation. In module three, we will discuss gender identity and sexual orientation in greater detail. So one of the first questions that's usually raised when people talk about HIV among trans people is how many people are trans in the United States? Unfortunately, the data we have to answer that question is quite limited. And some of the answers depend on how you ascertain transgender status. For example, younger adults, 18 to 24 year old, are more likely to identify as transgender compared with older adults. A recent 2017 meta-analysis estimates that in the US, one in 250 adults is transgender. So if you are a primary care provider with a patient panel between 1,800 and 2,500, you may have seven to 10 transgender individuals under your care. In our next module, we'll review generally how our trans patients' health compares to overall patient population.